A few years ago, I became obsessed with what might be the world's oldest micrometer, an important device that can measure tiny amounts and is fundamental to precision. Supposedly made in about 1776, it had the added mystery of allegedly being made by one of Britain's historical giants of engineering, James Watt. Watt vastly improved the steam engine, but then also made them in their hundreds, which helped power one of the greatest revolutions of all time. If Watt really did make this himself, it would predate any other end measurement micrometer by 75 years, making this the first one ever. And that would make it really interesting. Thanks to Ben at the Science Museum in London, I got to visit with it hands-on in 2018. The micrometer shows up in animations in several of my videos, and I even started the process of making one for myself. Over the years, I've been asked dozens of times for plans so people can make one for themselves. Well, stay tuned because I have some exciting news. But now it's been several years since I visited with the micrometer, and the question has remained. Did Watt really make this? Ben's done a lot of research trying to answer just that question, so let's check in with him. What we can say is that James Watt was one of a generation of engineers who changed the world. They made the most incredible machines, they made the most incredible scientific instruments, and what we've got here is Will and his team have really, really amazingly produced a set of plans so that you can reproduce what is potentially a really fascinating uh, precision scientific instrument. I'm Ben Russell, I'm the curator of the mechanical collections at the Science Museum in London. I, I look after the collections of engines and machines. We have machines by James Watt, Henry Maudsley, by Whitworth, by Clement, by James Naismith, you know, the, the father of the steam hammer, uh, Richard Arkwright. Um, you name them. If you think about the Industrial Revolution and think about those people who were involved in that, we've probably got things made by them and made by them personally. The, the micrometer itself is a, you know, it's a, it's a relatively small, you know, we're talking about machine, you know, machines the size of buildings, and suddenly we've got a thing which is, you know, it, it's handheld, you can hold it in your hand and it's cool. It's designed or intended to be a, a precision measuring instrument, um, and it, allegedly it dates from 1772, 1776. What the idea is with the, the the micrometer, and you'll see this in all in all you know, all, the, all the drawings and, and, the, and the reconstructions of it and that sort of thing, is that it's designed to measure very accurately uh, items which are up to about one inch across. And when you look at it, the first thing you realise is the micrometer is pretty badly made. It's 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 not great. Um, now, of course, you know, interestingly, James Watt. I think we we know that actually he wasn't the best. Uh, instrument maker. So you look at the micrometer and you realize that quite possibly some of the component parts have been used as tests for other bits of so things like, you know, engraving circles. There's all sorts of random bits of, of engraving and, and marking of lines and that sort of thing on it. There's quite a lot of stuff in there which isn't parallel. Uh, so, for example, if you're looking at uh, there's, 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 a, there's a worm screw going through the middle, which which moves the measuring uh, anvil backwards and forwards when you look at that it's everything slightly out of sync with everything else it's all a little bit funny when when you try and actually you know move the anvil to take a measurement everything is slightly binding up it's all a little bit you know there's there's obviously issues with everything being the, the right dimension and not being too thick or too thin and, and and not binding up and that sort of thing and it's not it's not great so when you so Actually, you know, having had a chance to explore with the the, the the instrument, you think, well, this isn't this isn't top quality. Also, you know, your your professional sort of nose for things starts to sort of sniff and you think, no, I'm not sure about this. Yeah, you know, we we tend to be very skeptical about most things. I think you have to be because when you're dealing with the sort of national myths, you you know, you've got to be really on your game. And and if things aren't, you think, oh no, mm, yeah, uh, your professional sort of um hang on a minute sort of sort of sense starts starts to go and so with the micrometer i started to to very carefully you know look at it how it was made uh, we did things like materials testing xrf uh, analysis which very looks at the composition of the brass for example right down to that level of detail we compared the instrument with other things which were, were definitely made by watt which were present in watt's workshop and then as most historians do you kind of go away and you review the paper trail but there's a whole century where there's no paper trail at all. And then suddenly there's a lot. Now, I had also, at that point, I had all sorts of alarm bells ringing because you're thinking like, mm, yeah, especially when you look at the background, you think about um, 
uh, again, Watt's position as this very prominent, very significant you know, hero of engineering, especially when you realize uh, that there's well-documented cases of other items which have tr been traditionally associated with Watt, uh, which have turned out not to be. Uh, and I strongly suspect uh, that, that, that with, the, with, the, with the, the, the micrometer, again, it's early, it's interesting. I don't think it was Watts, and I'd be very, very surprised if it actually dates from 1776, or probably a century later. And so that does raise this really interest. Actually, this, this isn't to, you know, to, to, to impugn the interest of the object, actually quite the opposite. It actually makes it more interesting. Because, okay, if he didn't make it, who did? And why would you do that? You know, so was this, um, you know, was this, uh, you know, an apprentice piece? Was this uh, uh, someone, you know, actually, you know, rather than it being an apprentice piece, was this someone actually deliberately trying to make something like that? You know, you've seen Whitworth's um, micrometers, Palmer's micrometers, uh, and that sort of thing. And they're trying to make their own version of something which is becoming more uh, popular. You know, every, every engineer has to have one really from the, from the 1870s onwards. Is it something like that? And then it just gets this label attached to it. And suddenly, again, the paper trail is unclear. And suddenly that label becomes, this is definitively what it is. You know, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of interesting potential stories associated. I think the nice thing about it is actually the what ifs are, are many and various. And, and again, this isn't to sort of take away or detract from the object actually quite the opposite it makes it more interesting that people thought it was so significant that they were prepared to give it this sort of status that this is what you know this counts for something and the fact they wanted to say that and actually attribute it to him is actually makes it more interesting not less it's a remarkable object in a way but again the stories you could tell about it are, are what makes it as interesting as much as the object itself hey will here again Earlier, you heard Ben say he didn't think the micrometer was likely made by Watt, and I have to agree. Ben has daily access to hundreds of Watt artifacts, wrote an excellent book on Watt, and has even written papers on the micrometer, so this is not just idle speculation. But I also agree it doesn't take away from the interest in the object, and like Ben said, I think makes it even more interesting. Several years ago, I started building my own replica, but life got in the way and I had to set it aside. Even though I had modeled the micrometer in CAD and made several renders of it in my videos, I never had a set of plans I felt comfortable sharing, even though I was asked many times. My versions were made before I saw the real thing, and I discovered I had a lot of errors, not to mention the dimensions were all wrong. So today, I'm fixing that, and I'm releasing plans aimed at home shop people like me that is a balance between very close accuracy with the original, but drawn with modern machines and materials in mind for easy making. I know what I've made in CAD is very accurate because on my visit I took dozens of photographs from every angle. Then I fed those photos into photogrammetry software that produced a surprisingly accurate mesh. Also on my visit we took some measurements. Then with the mesh of the micrometer in CAD, I scaled it so it was exactly the same as the real life example. Now we had a really accurate digital model to work with. Next I hired a professional CAD modeler, Joseph Menafra to make the CAD model and drawings, and I think the results are outstanding. When you overlay the CAD model on the photogrammetry mesh, there just really isn't any difference. A quick shout out to my patrons who funded this, other cool projects we've already done, and a lot more to come. They'll also get to see a much longer cut of my interview with Ben with a lot more detail. Thank you to everyone who helps. With the plans, I'm releasing a lot of reference photos as well, so you too can make one that is very accurate to the original. Now, if you are going to make one, let me know. I'd love to stay in touch with people who are making their own versions, maybe even put together a future video highlighting all of the amazing work I know you can do. I know I started making one, but I've been itching to get back at it, and I think this might be the perfect time. There's links in the video description to all of this, including how to get in touch with me. A gigantic thanks to Ben and the Science Museum in London. I've been there probably a half dozen times and I'm always blown away by their artifacts and exhibits. Truly one of the world's great science and engineering museums and not to be missed if you are even remotely nearby. As an aside, I recently launched a Discord server that we'll be using to coordinate a big upcoming project and more fun things in the future. If you're building a micrometer, maybe we can chat about it there too. Already, there's some interesting channels and good conversations, so please come and join us. 
I'll close with some final words from Ben that really meant a lot to me and sums up how I feel about what we're doing together here. I think if, if, if people can take the drawings and they can turn it into working examples, if people can actually go away and make these things, I will. I think I would have considered my job to have been done that we've got a whole bunch of people who are have got those skills you know it's about hand skill and that having that sort of engineering mindset you know hell you know we need engineers now like we've never needed them before and and, and i could just sort of rest assured that we've kind of got that that reservoir of of talented people who can make stuff who can then take those skills and and and, and, and apply them to pretty much anything else that might come along i think that would be that'll be a job done for me definitely <laughs>